OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good morning and welcome once again. Uh, as the slide indicates, I am David Stang. I'm just going to adjust this moment. Okay, so uh, the good news, the bad news is, is that you just have me today, not Abby, uh, unfortunately, uh, to do this presentation. But the good news is, is that uh, according to the agenda, we're scheduled for lunch, I think, around 12. But uh, my presentation will not go nearly, nearly that long. So uh, you, you, you may be excused for lunch uh, quite a bit early. Uh, again, I'm David Stang, and I'm going to provide a uh, brief overview today of federal program monitoring. See if I can go to the next slide. Use your arrow keys on your keyboard. Got it. They weren't working, Melinda, so I'll just use my oh, Um Okay, so uh, our agenda for the presentation uh, is to um, describe or tell you a little bit about what federal program monitoring is. Um, I'll talk a little bit about purpose why we do it and i'll talk a little bit about the fpm office uh, as you may know there are many different offices here at the department of education uh, the adult education office us for example uh, and the fpm office uh, we'll talk a little bit about their role uh, and their how they coordinate federal program monitoring for other program offices here at cde and um, talk a little bit about um, federal program monitoring program instruments, more specifically, uh, the adult ed instrument. And then we'll talk about instrument items or categories, which are found in the instrument uh, and evidence requests or documents, which you will upload into a management information system here at CDE called CMT, the California Monitoring Tool, when you get scheduled for a review. And then lastly, uh, during our presentation this morning, we'll talk a little bit about your role as AFLA administrators during the course of a federal program monitoring review. Okay, so um, AFLA, uh, or the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act, which is why we are all here today, requires CDE to conduct on-site and online monitoring of all adult education grant recipients. Okay, so anyone who receives federal, fund federal funding for at some point will be scheduled for an FPM review. Um, <clears throat> The purpose of the review is to ensure agencies are in compliance with federal and where applicable state law. Okay. And the current monitoring cycle is for this program year, 2023-24. Okay, the CDE is required to monitor the implementation or administration of federal and state funding. These are the types of agencies who receive AFLA funding, local education agencies or K-12 school districts, uh, community colleges, coalitions, community-based organizations or CBOs, libraries, and other state agencies like the Department of Ed. Okay, uh, I'm gonna provide you with a couple of tips during this presentation today. Uh, the first uh, of which is, please do not wait until your agency is scheduled for a review to familiarize yourself with the adult ed instrument, okay? Uh, in a couple subsequent slides from, from this one, 
there will be um, links, several links uh, for you to access, uh, one of which will have the adult education instrument, uh, among other resources for you to, to review prior to your uh, review. Uh, typically, typically, we do our very best not to schedule program reviews for agencies with new administrators uh, within the first or second year. Uh, you have so you have somewhat of a grace period, but uh, I, I we we do really encourage you to get a, at least at least get a hold of this year's instrument, download it to your computer, and look through it so you can begin to have an idea of what will be asked of you during uh, a program review. And if you're if you're um, up to it uh, and have time. Um, we also would encourage you to even begin um, prepping for it uh, in small ways uh, that make sense before your schedule for review. Okay, so I mentioned we talk about purpose. Uh, and as I alluded to before, um, part of the purpose of conducting federal program monitoring is to ensure agencies who receive federal funding meet compliance, okay? Um, <clears throat> It's also um, for agencies that receive program funding uh, who are responsible for creating and maintaining programs um, to ensure they meet minimum fiscal and programmatic requirements. Uh, we refer to this as minimum compliance. Okay, uh, during the course of a federal program review, we are not trying to take back money from you. We are, it is not in any way uh, shape or form, a, a gotcha type of moment. We work together with you uh, and help uh, to the best of our ability to make sure that you get to minimum compliance during your review. Uh, the purpose is also for uh, the AEO to learn more about your programs and the services provided and to identify highly functioning agencies. Um, there are many different um, characteristics of highly functioning agencies. Um, and those are the types of um, characteristics that we, we look for so that we can share those with other agencies and so that we can learn more about um, the types of services being provided throughout the state. Okay, so what does the FPM office, what is their role? Um, the FPM office here at CDE they coordinate most of the reviews that are conducted through the department. I say most because the FPM office, the, the vast majority of reviews are conducted uh, for K-12 school districts. And the FPM office coordinates those reviews. If you are a CDO, a library, or a community college, or another state agency, our office, the AEO, coordinates those reviews. That's a little bit different. But in either case, um, agencies can get selected for review every two years, uh, aside from the grace period that you get in your first and second year as new administrators. Uh, there are on-site reviews where we actually go on site and um, do classroom observations. We often review staff um, and just um, get a better sense of the program and services that you offer. And then uh, the other type of review is an online review, uh, also referred to as a telemonitoring review, um, conducted much the same way as an on-site review. Uh, we just don't, we don't physically go to where you're located. Um, but both, both types of reviews involve a 30-day pre-review period where we review documents that you've uploaded into the management information system I mentioned earlier. Uh, we review those documents for 30 days and uh, make sure they meet compliance. And if they do not, then we let you know so that we can work towards uh, reaching minimum compliance. And then the final uh, actual week of the review is when we work towards finalizing the review and uh, if there are any issues, um, issuing findings and, and um, coming up with a resolution process. 
And then um, regional team leaders or RTLs work with the CDE program reviewers, those of us who conduct reviews, and agency coordinators, uh, typically at the district level or leadership at um, community colleges or libraries um, uh, to conduct the on-site or online review. Okay. Um, here is a, uh, and from my understanding, you'll have access to these slides, um, but here is the, uh, here is the link to the compliance monitoring webpage. This is the FPM office um, resources uh, that you have available to you, uh, where you can learn a little bit more about the process and what it encompasses. There are frequently asked questions. Uh, there are monitoring cycles. All K-12 agencies are on a cycle, a two-year cycle. And then there is also information about the criteria uh, that is used to identify which agencies will be scheduled for review. And then there are also um, links to additional training um, I don't think you need to access those at this point. Uh, probably a good idea to wait until you're actually scheduled to access the additional training. But um, just as an FYI, those these are the types of resources that are available to you at this link. All right. Uh, a repeat of the first tip for success, which should convey to you the importance of uh, familiarizing yourself with the adult ed instrument, right? Here's a link. Uh, again, uh, you'll have access. Uh, these shit, the slides will be shared with you later. Uh, you do have a minute to jot this down. Um, but uh, uh, please do familiarize yourself with the adult education instrument. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I'll put that in the chat once my presentation is done. Um, or to or to ask your regional consultant. Uh, again, you you will know well in advance when you will be scheduled for a review. Um, but as I say, it's just it's a really good heads up to go through the instrument beforehand to get an idea of the kinds of things you're expected to know, and also to get an idea of uh, documents, uh, which in some case um, there can be. Um, many, many documents that you will need to upload into CMT. So if possible, uh, please take a look at that and get an idea and even begin organizing a little bit, uh, if that's possible, some of the documents that are included in the instrument. Okay, so um, all program offices uh, like, like adult education, like English learners before and after school, right? The, these are the type the type of examples of other program offices here at CDE, right? Uh, fiscal monitoring, all of these program offices use program instruments to guide their reviews. Uh, you don't need to worry about the other offices, uh, just adult education, um, but all program instruments have items, instrument items. They're essentially categories um, that the reviewer refers to during a review. Our instrument and your instrument uh, has 10 items, all right? And again, once again, here is the link to the adult ed instrument. Um, this, this is just an overview today, folks. Um, trust me, the instrument, um, is a detailed instrument uh, and um, it includes these categories and many of the documents that you'll need to become familiar with and to upload when you are scheduled for a review. Uh, just quickly uh, and to, to give you an idea of the categories, there are 10 in our instrument, uh, 10 items. Um, and um, just to give you an idea of what items we have in our instrument, hopefully hopefully you're familiar enough with the adult ed program by this point to that, that these categories or items will resonate with you in some way. Um, the first 
The category or item is collaboration, alignment, and support services, right? So um, we will ask you to provide documentation in this area uh, that demonstrates that you are collaborating uh, with, with partners, that you have support services, that you're um, aligning some of your services and programs with, with other partners. Okay. Um, AEO2 is financial accountability. Uh, makes sense, right? There's, uh, as, as a federal award, as a federal award, there would be some, some aspect of financial accountability. Data collection and program effectiveness, right? Um, hopefully, the the fact that those two are together um, gives you some in, in idea of the significance of data collection, right? For program effectiveness, uh, for to run your have an effective program, data collection is a key element. Um, and then also staff qualifications: are your teachers properly credentialed? Um, duty statements. Uh, these are the types of things that we will ask you to to provide to us when you're scheduled for a review. Um, professional development. Um, we have, um, a, you know, we work with a, a contractor, uh, uh, CalPro, who provides exceptional professional development, uh, which is available to you. Uh, so we look to see that you are uh, making professional development available to your staff, to teachers. Uh, that's much needed uh, and that will benefit your students. Uh, number five is needs assessment. Uh, I think uh, Diana alluded to her when she, in the previous uh, previous presentation, um, but we want to make sure that you are doing needs assessments uh, on a regular basis of the students and to make sure that the program and services that you are offering um, is in alignment with the needs of your area, right? Okay, and then the next um, group of, of categories, uh, the, the second half of our instrument um, is uh, serving individuals with disabilities, uh, AEO6, intensity, duration, uh, flexible scheduling, okay? Um, we, we ask you to upload class schedules uh, so that we can see that courses are being offered at appropriate times and not just at one time during the day. Um, and that they're being offered at a rate and that the hours of instruction are commensurate with when you are pre and post testing. Um, and then um, um, this is one that obviously would need to be here in, in the instrument, right? Evidence-based instructional practices and reading instruction, okay? Um, effective use of technology and distance learning. And then fi finally, IET, integrated education and training. So these are, these are the 10 items or categories you'll find in our instrument. And um, now we'll talk, talk a little bit more about evidence requests. So within each item or category, the 10 that I mentioned, there are evidence requests. Um, I think we have approximately 30, approximately 35 evidence requests for our instrument. Uh, and here on this slide are just a few examples of the types of evidence or documents that you'll have to upload. Um, under AEO1, remember it was collaboration, alignment, and support services, we ask you to upload an umbrella MOU with local work with the local workforce development board. So uh, hopefully, well, I'll say this, if, if any of you are wondering what that is, um, find out soon um, that you are required to have a current umbrella MOU with the LWDB uh, in your, in your um, workforce development board area. And it outlines the services uh, that are provided under the MOU and the cost sharing agreements that all of the partners agree to. So if you, this is why we say, please make sure you at least go through the instrument um, because 
this is an example of something that you should be familiar with now. Okay, um, AEO2, um, something else that you should be aware of and make sure that you are doing uh, is to make sure that you have a time and effort policy, right? Your agency, because you receive federal funding um, and many agencies use that federal funding to compensate staff, employees for their time and effort, you are required to um, complete or to uh, have a policy which reflects what you are actually doing. Uh, that is, staff are completing timesheets, um, you're doing some kind of semi-annual certification. Uh, it depends on the agency and what your policies are, uh, what, how you pay employees, but whatever your policy is, uh, it needs to match what you're actually doing. And that is what we check for during an FPM review. Um, under AEO3, data collection and program effectiveness, um, you need to upload a local assessment policy. And that policy you can access, if you're not familiar, you should be. Um, you can access at the CASAS website. Uh, your regional consultant can provide you a template. If I imagine most of you are familiar with this or there's one um, uh, somewhere uh, in your um, previous administration or the person who held your role prior to you, I'm sure they more than likely they had a local assessment policy that you can update or refer to. Uh, if you cannot find it, as I mentioned, there is one on the CASAS website or you can ask your regional consultant. Under AEO4, uh, which was staff credentialing uh, and um, professional development, um, duty statements. Um, we wanna take a look at all of the duty statements for the staff that you work with, okay? Um, and then uh, under AEO6, individuals with disabilities, uh, we ask for your ADA and IDEA policy, right? Um, how is your program, how does your program, how does your agency, uh, what is your process for making sure that students and staff have uh, access, uh, there's a process for when they need accommodations, all right? So um, just having a policy that says that you do not discriminate against individuals with disabilities is, is not sufficient. That would not meet minimum compliance. You need a process for when a student um, uh, um, has an um, IEP, for example, um, what is your process for how you make accommodations for that student? How do you follow up with that student's IEP? Uh, if staff need an accommodation, what is what's your referral process? So again, you can see this, begin to see the importance of looking at the instrument to give you an idea of the types of evidence that will be required uh, to meet minimum compliance. Uh, and the sooner you do that, that you can uh, make your life much easier and your staff if you get a little jump on that now. And then, um, and, and again, these are just a few examples. Um, there are, as I mentioned, approximately 35 requests. Um, but the last one here under AE10, uh, if you have uh, an IET program, you're receiving 243 funding, um, then evidence of co-enrollment, right? Uh, we want to see evidence that students uh, are enrolled in both an uh, ELL, ELA class, ELL class, uh, English language learners class, as well as a, some sort of training component, right? Uh, and that's what that evidence of co-enrollment is. Okay, uh, final tip for success. Um, make sure your agency has the correct documentation uh, and, in the, and or an example for each of the requests. Uh, what a lot of agencies do is they look at the, uh, the adult ed instrument, which you'll have links to in this presentation. Uh, it won't take you long to just go to the link and then bring up the instrument. Um, and then what they do is create folders for each of the categories um, and evidence requests. So you can begin to just, uh, when, when you become a little bit more familiar with the documents, 
as new administrators uh, that you that are uh, reflected in the instrument, you can begin to just put those into the to the folders you've created, and that way, when you are scheduled for a review, um, you'll at least have an idea of what they are, and um, you can share those with your regional consultant to see if that is in fact what we're looking for. Um, but by doing this, uh, you you get a, a little head start on the process. Um, because it is just a matter of time. If an agency has not been reviewed um, in three or four years, they um, will get scheduled for a review. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, what's your role as AFLA administrators? Uh, as, I, as we've talked about and I've emphasized um, probably too many times this morning, um, Becoming familiar with the instrument is obviously important. Um, ensure you and all additional users. So when you are scheduled for a review, you're going to get access to CMT, the CDE monitoring tool. Uh, the management information system here. Uh, once you get access to that, uh, uh, whoever you uh, delegate amongst your staff to help you with this process uh, and you will want to delegate right because it's a big uh, it's a big process it takes time um, as I mentioned there's a 30-day pre-review period but even leading up to the pre-review period uh, there are things that you can be doing and even your your reviewer can even look at documents prior to the 30-day period um, so make sure everyone has access uh, is the point here um, to CMT that you uh, want to be helping you with this uh, process when you're scheduled for a review. Um, you can assign additional users uh, so others can have access to CMT. So you are not the only person who is going into CMT and uploading um, what can be many, many documents. Um, so you want some help with that. Um, and then um, um, communicate with district personnel or uh, your agency's leadership of, um, about who's being assigned to coordinate the review, right? Um, if you're a K-12 school district, um, as the adult ed director or principal, um, you really are the most appropriate person to um, lead the adult ed portion of the review. Sometimes school districts will assign someone from the district, uh, which we do not, um, we cannot tell schools or any agency who to appoint as a coordinator. Um, but oftentimes when school districts do that, uh, many of those people they assign at the district are not familiar with adult ed. It just um, slows up the process. So um, reach out to district staff. Um, Make sure you have that rapport or relationship um, so that you can communicate the importance of you having access to CMT. The system works, the process works much better when your reviewer, who are your regional consultants typically, um, work with you and not somebody at the district to get all of the evidence uploaded into CMT. You are much more familiar with your program and um, how it runs and what forms of evidence would be appropriate to provide to uh, the CDE. Uh, and then um, coordinate on-site scheduling and work with program reviewer during the course of the review. So um, if you're being scheduled for an on-site review, um, uh, whether you're a K-12 school district, a community college, a library, whatever type of agency you are, if you're being scheduled for an on-site review, Make sure you work with your reviewer, uh, your program reviewer, to put together a schedule so you have an idea, your staff have an idea what day one will look like, day two, day three, day four, uh, if necessary. Okay. Um, so, um, looks like my slide. I apologize. It looks like my slides are a little out of order. 
That's okay. We'll just go through the review together. Um, I have a little review for you here, but that's okay. Um, which AFLA agencies get selected for program reviews? So you all are uh, representatives of AFLA agencies. You receive AFLA funding. So uh, who of you, which of you will get selected for reviews? All of you at some point will be scheduled for a review. All right. Uh, which office at CDE coordinates most federal program reviews? Uh, again, if you're a K-12 school district, the CDE, uh, the FPM office at CDE will coordinate your review. If you are any other type of agency, a library, uh, another state agency, community college, or CBO, uh, the adult ed office will coordinate that review. We will. Um, and then how, how often may agencies be selected for review? You can be selected. It doesn't necessarily mean you will be, but you can be selected for a review either online or on-site every two years. Typically, we do not review agencies every two years um, unless there are issues or concerns that we have. Um, we usually like to um, review agencies every three, four years, not two. Okay, I see here the problem. Um, again, my apology for the uh, slide being out of order. Um, and then, um, what is the name of the document um, that we really want you to take a look at as soon as possible? That's the adult education instrument. And uh, last question. What is another name for the documents agencies provide during a program review? Those are evidence requests. Okay. Um, again, uh, I'll put my, uh, as, soon as, as soon as we end here, I'll put my email in the chat. Um, but that's the end of my overview of federal program monitoring today. Um, do uh, access the instrument uh, when you get a chance. And please email me or any of your, um, I am the one of the um, FPM leads in our office along with Abby Medina Lewis. Uh, so if you have specific questions, feel free to email us or your regional consultant. Um, uh, Carolyn or, or Jim, I don't know if you have time for questions or if we want to need to move on. Uh, Dave, you, you do have a, a couple of uh, questions. Uh, do, do you want me to call those up for you? Um, yes, please. Okay. Okay, we have one question. Where can we find the document containing characteristics of highly functioning agencies? Hmm. Um, we do not have a document um, that reflects anything uh, or the characteristics of highly functioning agencies. That's an interesting question, though. Um, but the purpose, one of the purposes of FPM is for us to, as I mentioned, to identify those agencies um, for myriad reasons, right? When we um, want to know more about how they provide certain types of services, how some agencies, um, adult ed has a lot of moving parts, right? Uh, and much of it is, um, there's a lot to it. The, the learning curve for people who are new to adult ed is can be pretty steep. Um, and so we try to identify those agencies um, to do presentations when, when appropriate or to in, in certain areas to provide support to agencies that, that could use some additional support and to let you know um, who those agencies are so if you have questions, if you're not sure about something or you need support, um, reach out to uh, uh, reach out to your consultant um, and they may be able to put you in touch with some of those pizza highly functioning agencies. But uh, again, that's an interesting concept that you raise. Uh, we do not have um, we do not have anything uh, specifically of, you know, that, that indicates the characteristics of highly functioning um, um, agencies. Oh, 
Okay, and we have another question. Um, to clarify, new administrators have a grace period of two years and will have their review in the third year. Good question. Um, not necessarily. Um, we try to, we do our best to make sure that we know that you have a lot on your plate. And for those of you who are new to adult ed, as I mentioned, the learning curve can be pretty steep. Uh, we try not to burden you with a review because it can be a lot. Um, it's doable, especially if you're um, well organized and you you know start well in advance. Um, and we have many tips uh, when you are scheduled for a review. We conduct training. Um, you will be well prepared come come the time you you know have your review. Um, but you have that grace period. Uh, it does not mean that you'll be scheduled in that very next year, but um, typically we really try to uh, review agencies um, no more than every four years. Agencies that are highly functioning and typically don't have issues, uh, we may give them a little bit more uh, time. Uh, we may, you know, uh, allow for an additional year, but. Uh, we really do our best not to um, allow agents or not to go more than uh, five years, four or five years for a review. Okay, and it looks like our last question. When will we know if we are selected for a review in the previous school year or the summer before the review? Uh, good question. Typically, we, uh, typically we begin the notification process begins in um, May and June, um, and we will let we will um, first initially uh, let you know that uh, the scheduling or identification process has begun. Um, and um, I mentioned I, I mentioned for K twelve school districts that there are monitoring cycles on the FPM or uh, CDE monitoring website. Um, if you take a look at those cycles, um, it will give you an indication of when you were last reviewed. Um, but um, otherwise, we give notification to agencies typically in uh, May and June, well in advance of when you're, you know, be scheduled for reviews are scheduled throughout the year. Uh, but um, usually by uh, the middle of July, you should have a, a good idea of if you've been scheduled for the subsequent year. Okay, yeah, I think that's it for the uh, questions. Okay, all right, thank you everyone. Again, um, I'll put my email in the chat and if you have any additional questions or you need help accessing those links, let me know. Thank you.